Hello everyone, Meta5 for 7 the second here, and I am bringing you another commentary. So you're probably wondering what today's subject will be. To explain the context, many years ago I did a series of rants on video games, which, spoilers, were terrible. Except maybe the one I did on Castlevania, but the others were complete garbage. Why? Because they were full of nitpicks, and because I took a lot of inspiration from a reviewer named Alexander4488, also known as the Game Dude, who got a lot of hate for being an angry video game nerd ripoff. One of those reviews I did was on the game Kingdom Hearts Recoded, which was one that I was mocked the most for. But I'm not here to cover that one. I'm here to cover a commentary that was done on it pretty recently by a user named Robert628. I don't really mind him commentating an old video. As a matter of fact, I just finished doing one last year. But his video is still flawed. Now, like I've said in some of my previous times commentating on commentaries on myself, I'm not doing this to defend myself, I'm doing this because Robert's video is flawed, and to those who don't believe me, I'll also make some counterpoints towards myself so people don't have to accuse me of getting butthurt over criticism. Here we go. Hello everyone, Robert628 here, and welcome to another commentary. So, who is today's victim this time? Well, it's none other than Meta527 the second. As you know, this guy is a YouTuber who makes various videos on countdowns, reviews, and much, much more. And which one of his videos are we going to do today? I cannot believe how many times I've had to make this point, but stuttering like this can easily be edited out. A little later. Anyways, let's get started. And for those of you who haven't already guessed, yep, he's recording footage off his iPad. So because of that, the video and audio quality are really, really bad. Now, I'll admit, as far as having to record off your screen quality goes, this is actually kind of creative with how he's using his avatar pictures in one tab and the video he's covering in the other, and having them both on screen at the same time. But it's still unprofessional. So just to make this video easier for you guys to watch, I'm going to splice in my original video, and when Robert is talking, I'm going to look for the pictures of Ike that he's using and put them up. I can safely say I love the Kingdom Hearts franchise. Even though I have only played five of the Kingdom Hearts games, I love all five of the Kingdom Hearts games I have played. Wait, so you're saying you've only played five of the Kingdom Hearts games before you made this video? Why yes, I've only played five of them at the time. Because back then, there were only six Kingdom Hearts games. So don't give me that only five stuff when literally the only one I hadn't played at the time, not counting remakes, was Birth by Sleep. And even if there were more Kingdom Hearts games, would that really be a big deal? And you don't even elaborate on which ones you've played? Why? I showed which games I played in the footage I was showing. Look, the footage was of the original Kingdom Hearts, Chain of Memories, Kingdom Hearts 2, and 358 over two days. So what about the fifth one that I had played? Well, that's literally the game that the rant is dedicated to, so I think it would have been obvious which ones I had played. Except for one. Kingdom Farts Reek Oded. Okay, there are major problems with that. First, you're just using a random PNG of the game's logo. And why is that a problem? Do you think it was really necessary to say Kingdom Farts Reek Oded? You have the ability to talk like a normal human being. So what's the problem here? The problem is that you're taking an obvious joke too literally. I was making that Kingdom Farts Reek Oded comment as a way to make fun of the game. I mean, granted, maybe it was more immature than funny, but it was still a joke nonetheless, and you're taking it too seriously. I want a completely new game, not an expansion pack to the original Kingdom Hearts. Well, okay. So you're saying you wanted a new game, not an expansion pack? Well, shouldn't your sentence be, I wanted a completely new game, but not an expansion pack to the original Kingdom Hearts? Why exactly does it matter? Don't both of those sentences mean the same thing? Maybe it's not an expansion pack. It's like a de-expansion pack. It's like the original Kingdom Hearts done wrong. Okay, this game is not a remake of the original Kingdom Hearts. It's actually a remake of a mobile game called Kingdom Hearts Coded, which was released in Japan back in 2008. I know it's not a remake of the original Kingdom Hearts. What I was getting at is that it's basically a glorified remake of it. The fact that you go through some of the same levels with almost the exact same layouts and even fight the same bosses. A few moments later. You can't even play as the real Sora. Instead, you play as this big phony named Data Sora. Data Sora is not really his actual name. He's still called Sora in the game, but he got that nickname because he entered a data world 
which his data got copied and formed into this guy. Even if he's still called Sora, it's still not the real Sora. It's a clone. A much better point you could have brought up is that I was making a big deal over nothing since this Sora still basically acts and plays out like the real Sora. Just look at this. I don't see anything. Of course you don't. The screen you're recording off is too bright. Okay, seriously though. By look at this, I was referring to the dialogue that was being shown on the screen. No, he didn't save the island. I've played the original Kingdom Hearts, and since this game acts like an expansion pack to the original, you must not have saved the island. You only destroyed the monster that was destroying the island, but it was going to be destroyed anyways. What they meant by he fixed the island was that he got rid of all the bug blocks that were infecting the world. Because in this game, your adventures happen inside of the journal's data, which is chronicling what happened during the real Sora's adventures. But the data was corrupted with bug blocks, which is what Data Sora is here to fix. Now instead of hand in hand, Knight of Faith plays into Rift Town. He plays at both Destiny Islands and Traverse Town, but hand in hand isn't in the game at all. Yeah, because of memory limitations, how they couldn't put those songs in the game. They were able to handle having the world things in Kingdom Hearts 350 over two days, and that game had just as many worlds as Recoded did, assuming you include the data world. So if 358 over two days was able to include all those songs, so should Recoded. Also, those songs? Don't you mean that song? I only talked about one song being cut. One minute later. Besides, even in Chain of Memories, Hand of Hand played the first time when we first entered. <laughs> And it also returned in Smash Bros. Ultimate when Sora finally came, as his victory theme. What does that have to do with the rest of the commentary? You're literally just bringing up a fun fact about the song that doesn't refute my point in any way. Oh darn, I meant to put that towel somewhere else. You can't remove a new towel without replacing it. Well, at least you have blank chips which fill in spots and can also be used as replacing something that you forgot to mess up. Forgot to mess up? You mean that I did mess up. And even if you do get blank chips, there's a limited amount to how many you have, which is fair, but it's still annoying that they can't be removed without being replaced. You could in 350 over two days. Why not now? I'm not really sure why. And I'm not really sure why you felt the need to basically stop the video to agree with me. There are also no new worlds in this game, except for those data worlds, which are nothing but an excuse to make this game look good. Well, I seem to remember in your least favorite video games that you actually like the data worlds because they're nice and they actually serve a purpose. But before that, you're saying they're bad? Notice the upload dates of both my recorded rent and my least favorite games list. Notice that my least favorite games list was uploaded nearly two whole years after my recorded rent. So maybe my opinion on them has changed since then. Opinions tend to do that in the span of years. And besides, that still doesn't debunk my point about how there are no new worlds in the game aside from those ones. Later. Bug blocks seem nice, except for the danger ones and the metal ones. The danger ones give you damage if you touch them with anything that's not your keyblade, and a lot of times you have to get past them. The metal blocks are also irritating because you can't break them. This was another really stupid thing of me to say in my rant. The danger ones, I might have been onto something there when bringing up how you have to get past them, but the metal ones were intended to make the game work better. It's like the unbreakable boxes in the Crash Bandicoot games. I might as well have complained about those too. I should have brought up how the Black Spider versions were the annoying ones. Song Vim and Vigor plays in almost every boss battle in the game. While I do love that song, it's getting overused throughout the franchise. Yeah, because it's supposed to be the main boss theme of the games. That's not the point. The point is that I felt the song was overused throughout the franchise. Especially since there are plenty of other boss themes in the Kingdom Hearts series they could have used. Squirming Evil, Desire for All That Is Lost, The Fight For My Friends, The Encounter, I could go on. I just love how Sora walks in the sand without even leaving footprints. This is another thing I noticed in your video game rants. You take way too much inspiration from Game Dude, one of the most hated reviewers on the internet. So, why are you doing it all of a sudden? As much as I agree with you on that point, there are a lot of people in the commentary community who don't know who Game Dude is since he stopped being relevant in the early 2010s. So when you say that I took too much inspiration from Game Dude without saying how what I said was similar to Game Dude, people won't get the context. I'll explain the context because I was nitpicking too much. 12 seconds later. Now in the desert, there's a time freeze mission where you have to find the lamp before time runs out. Breaking boxes or defeating enemies that won't even attack you will drop time extensions, but they'll only add like a few seconds onto your time. But they take 5 seconds to break or defeat, 
so most of the time they're not worth it. Even worse, it's nearly impossible to find the lamp because it keeps being moved. Yeah, the lamp is hard to find because it keeps being moved. I can understand that, but it's supposed to make it a challenge. Even if it is supposed to be a challenge, I clearly found it too cheap of a challenge. Especially since, as brought up, when breaking the boxes to get more time, you end up using more time than the amount you get back. So after this level, next we're going into the whale, right? One thing I've noticed during that segment is that you have the game's audio muted, and you don't explain why. So, can you tell us that? The audio was not muted. This is a segment of the game that has no music. In fact, I'll even show gameplay footage without any commentary over it. See? Notice how there's no music in it. See, I didn't mute the game. Heck, there are even sound effects in the part of the video I played, which I'm guessing you didn't hear. Anyways, that's the end of his part one. Yeah, this is a multi-parter, in 2023. Though he did explain his reasons for it, because he doesn't want to make his videos too long, so he can have more spare time, and because he wanted to leave his viewers in suspense. I'm not sure I can call all three of those good enough reasons, but I guess that maybe I'll let it slide. Anyways, on to part two. One week later. So, are we going inside the whale now? You know, when we can clearly see the captions saying wrong at the end of the last part, it kinda takes away from the suspense you're trying to build up to, so people would already know if we're going inside Monster or not. WRONG! Instead, you go right to Hollow Bastion. They skip the whale, Halloween Town, the ocean, and the pirate ship. I love those levels, and they remove them. Now that sounds bad, right? No, actually it's a good thing. Why? They probably would have made those worlds look bad anyways. Yeah, it kind of does sound bad. At first, you're saying they're bad, but now they're good? I did that to subvert expectations and make it sound like a complaint, only for it to turn out to be a backhanded compliment. I never actually said it was a bad thing, even though what I said sounded like it would imply it. It was kind of supposed to be a joke. Later. Why the heck would they put something like this in the Kingdom Hearts game? I don't hate games for being different from the classics. I mean, Kirby's Epic Yarn and Pokemon Ranger Shadows of Almia are good. Like I said in my commentary on my Guardian Sands rant, that footage of Shadows of Almia that I got was way too choppy. So needless to say, it looks very, very unprofessional. It would have been much better if I got better footage of it. How is Pokemon Ranger Shadows of Almia different from the Ranger series? I know it has a few differences, unless you're talking about it being different from the main series Pokemon games. That's exactly what I meant. I was talking about it being different from the main Pokemon series. Though, to be fair, it wasn't very smart of me to bring up a spin-off as to how a game is different from the classics. Moments later. The song is heroic and it's pretty awesome, but it plays right when you're about to go inside Riku, making the song seem completely ridiculous. No, it's supposed to make the moment epic. Again with misinterpreting what I was trying to say. I wasn't saying that making the moment ridiculous was their intention when playing the song there. I was saying that their usage of this song is hard to take seriously because of how stupid the scene is. How are you messing up this badly when commentating on one of the worst videos I've ever made? Why is there a mobile inside Riku? So that you can restock on items. That's not the point. I was talking about how disturbing the thought of Data Riku having a Moogle inside him is. Heck, my very next sentence I was saying should be proof enough of what I'm getting at. Though, to be fair, that sentence was still not a very smart sentence, but I'll get to that right now. Is Riku a cannibal? A human can't be a cannibal for eating a Moogle. The Moogle would have to be human, or at least human enough, in order for Data Riku to be considered a cannibal for eating it. I still think it's disturbing, but my point still stands. Well, no, that's not true, because according to the internet, this isn't the real Riku. According to the internet? The game itself revealed earlier that this wasn't actually Riku. Oh, Riku! Riku? Not quite. Much like Sora there. I'm just zeros and ones that look like somebody you know. One minute later. When you're inside this fake Riku, you would have to go through the past worlds and solve the data worlds again. And that wouldn't be half bad if the data worlds weren't such a waste of programming, or if they weren't way too pixelated, or if you weren't doing it inside this fake Riku. Besides, it'll also bring back all the terrible memories of the game. Don't you dare go there, Meta. Go where? What are you even calling me out for? Not only are you not telling me why what I said was bad, but you're also not even telling me what I even said that was bad. I mean, with your other counterpoints, I could understand what you were trying to say, but now you're literally just saying that something in what I said is bad without even explaining it.
When you're done, you have to escape from Data Riku or you'll be trapped inside him forever. That would have been an awesome escape mission if it weren't so gross. I love escape missions, especially the Metroid games. Unnecessary sentence. How exactly? How is it unnecessary? I was just saying that I ordinarily love escape missions, but this is an exception. And look at it this way. It was at least more necessary than your point about hand in hand getting into Smash Ultimate. Ten seconds later. Look, a moving black snake platform. Where have I seen that before? Super Mario World? Kingdom Hearts Recoded stole the black platform from Super Mario World. I mean, they're similar, but not identical. How are they not identical? Couldn't you at least elaborate on the differences? Unlike in Super Mario World, it's bad because it goes way too slow. Only like one quarter times as fast as it was in Super Mario World. And when the platform curves to go down, if you're on the front of the platform, you'll fall off. Well, duh, that happens. What's your point? Soon after. Then you'll watch this cutscene. Wait, what parts not in the journal will always be inside him? Now he's eating journal pages too? What are you even talking about? I think it's kind of self-explanatory where I got my logic from, even if it was stupid logic. Since the journal data is inside him, that's why I assumed that he ate it. Back then, I didn't know that Data Riku was actually Jiminy's journal taking on human form. What a damage to get into my head. The song that played in the background during this cutscene was great, but now it's just decent. The reason why it's average instead of great is because now it reminds me of that nauseating thought of all that information being inside him. This is starting to make zero sense at all. Okay, let me explain to you what I meant by that. I was saying that I loved that song, but after hearing it in this scene that I claimed was disgusting, that practically ruined the song for me and made it going from being awesome to just plain average. A better point you could have brought up is that I shouldn't let one faulty usage of that song ruin my overall enjoyment of it. Two very boring minutes later. Well, that must have been the final boss, huh? Well, at least I beat the game. Good thing, too. I was getting sick and tired of that game anyways. Or is it? Well... That concludes my second commentary. Or was it? Just saying, or is it? This short of a time after saying it the first time honestly makes you sound kinda redundant. Otherwise, that wasn't really a bad outro for this part. Anyways, at long last, we're finally entering the third and final part. One week later. Guys, big news. A new world has shown up inside the journal. Wait. What did he just say? Hmm, I think I heard him say something about a new world inside a journal. I heard him. I was just saying that to be dramatic. A lot of people had said, what did he just say? In response to hearing something that they don't want to hear. Just like with the King Dump Farts Recoded point back in part one, you're taking what I said too literally. One minute later. One more world. One more disgrace of a world. This is one of the worst worlds in the entire game. Can you even explain why it's the worst world in the game? Okay, first of all, I said that it's one of the worst worlds in the game. Not that it's the worst world in the game. I think you need to see an ear doctor. Second of all, I literally explained the reasons almost instantly after you stopped the video to tell me to explain. It's basically a rehash of the past worlds. I don't normally mind rehashes of past worlds, I mean, Brawl and Wind Waker did okay. I could have sworn we already went through a rehash of the past worlds when we were inside Data Riku. Well, when you were inside Data Riku, you explored the actual worlds. Well, here you explored areas based off the original worlds. I get what you're trying to say, but even if they are more so based off these worlds than actually going back to these respective worlds, it's still basically a rehash of what you did throughout the game, which we had already gone through an hour earlier. So yeah, it's still resorting to padding out the game by doing two rehashes of past worlds, even if they are done differently. Ten seconds later... The music is nice, if you remember from Chain of Memories, it keeps looping and almost never changes. It'll give you a big headache. Well, I mean, it's supposed to be intense, but I think you're kind of overreacting there. Even if it is supposed to be intense, that doesn't change the fact that I personally found it repetitive. Just because it's supposed to be intense, doesn't mean it is intense. It's like if you hear a bad comedian telling jokes. His jokes are supposed to be funny, but they aren't. Get the picture? Now, let's put it this way. Have you seen Game of Thrones for 23's worst video game cliches list? Yes, I have seen Alex Rochon's video game cliches list. And besides, wasn't that the first commentary you ever did? Yes, but what does this debunk? This literally contributes nothing to your commentary. There's one part of it you should listen to. 
I'm sure by now you all know how much I love final boss battles and how I especially love the build-up to some of these battles. Yeah, I agree. Some of the final bosses are great. Even ignoring the fact that there's really no point to make counterpoints towards clips people are using, that's another instance of you just stopping the video to agree with the uploader. 328 AM. The game also tries to hide who he is, if you're a big enough Kingdom Hearts fan, to be blatantly obvious by his two keyblades and his boss theme who he is. Well, you just said who it was a minute ago. Once again, how does that debunk my point? I mean, at least this time you're actually attempting to refute my argument. But how exactly does the fact that I addressed him by name prove me wrong about how obvious that is that that's Roxas? If anything, it just further proves my point about how obvious it is. Moments later. That was my favorite part of the song and they removed it. Why? Why did they remove it? I love that part so much. Well, maybe because they want you to be sorry for Roxas. Darn it, Robert, you just had to follow that actually good point up with another stupid point. How would removing a dramatic part of a song be an attempt at making us feel sorry for Roxas? Moments later. I know that I made it clear how I did play Star Wars, but that I'm not really Hey, Robert, this is another reason as to why just recording your iPad screen isn't a very good idea because sometimes we can barely hear the original points that I was trying to make. And even if you can't record videos any other way, the least you could do is at least turn up the volume of your iPad. But that was before I faced Roxas. Riku from 350 over two days may have been disappointing, but at least he was an okay final boss, considering the nice music. Roxas, on the other hand, is a terrible final boss. Maybe that's why you should have avoided to make your disappointing final bosses. I had no way of knowing that I would find Data Roxas' fight even more disappointing than Data Riku's fight. So you're basically getting out my case for not being able to see the future. If I just waited for every game to come out in the off chance that it might have a small chance of having an entry that qualifies for the list, then I might as well not do countdowns at all until I stop playing video games for good. Now do you see how dumb of an argument that is? So I do feel bad, just for the wrong reasons. Overall, this game's horrible. The camera's bad, story feels like a bad remake of the original Kingdom Hearts, and it ruins the song The Other Promise. I know, you're really trying to repeat yourself in this review, it seems like. Not that that was a bad point, but I just feel like I should give an explanation as to why I did that. The reason I did that is because in the rant I did before this one, which was on Diddy Kong Racing DS, Death Critic commentated on it, and in the end, he got on my case for not elaborating at all why it was horrible. Though to be fair, Death Critic was a brainless moron, so I shouldn't have listened to him at that point, especially since I had literally spent the entire rant talking about why I hated Diddy Kong Racing DS. But yeah, now you know why I just repeated those points there. Again, not saying your point was wrong, just giving you an answer to your question. This is the worst game I've ever played. Did they even think that anyone would like this game? Well, why was it only number three on your least favorite video game? Again, because opinions change over time. And also because when we talk about the games that were in the top two, Game & Watch Gallery 4 was a game that I didn't realize I hated yet, and the number one entry, Final Fantasy 3 for the DS, was a game I hadn't played yet at the time, so I didn't realize that I'd hate those games more than I hate this one back then. 12 seconds later. The entire universe would be so much better without this game. No, it won't. I'll admit, I was being overdramatic in my point about how the universe would be so much better without it, but that no it won't point was just dumb. You don't even explain how it won't, you just say no it won't. I'd expect this kind of point from fanboys who can't come up with good defensive arguments for the game they fanboy over. I'm not saying you're a fanboy, just saying that that point sounds like one that a fanboy would make. More moments later. But even so, I have high expectations for the Kingdom Hearts 3DS game. I haven't played Dream Drop Distance, but I've seen Kobernami 456's Let's Play of the game. I bet it'll be a million times better. Plus, wasn't Dream Drop Distance number 5 on your games you played in 2012 list? Yet even more pointless statements that contribute nothing to your commentary. You know how you called a couple points of my rant pointless? Well, I can say that about some of your points in this commentary. This is Metro 5 to 7 second, and I'll leave you with this slide. Do not buy Kingdom Hearts Recoded. What did you even say there? How are you supposed to recommend this game to the Kingdom Hearts fans? Who said I wanted to recommend it to Kingdom Hearts fans? If I clearly hate this game, I don't think it would be that much of a guess to say that I wouldn't recommend it. If anything, there was a much better point you could have made here, that that last line for me made me sound like a complete brat who can't respect the opinions of other people. Well, that finally concludes my second ever commentary. My next commentary will hopefully be a lot better. I hope so too, because this commentary we just saw from you was just embarrassing. But then again, considering what we saw from this one, I'm not getting my hopes up.
It doesn't really paint a good picture of you as a commentator when you mess up a commentary this badly, especially when you're commentating on another bad video. I'm not trying to defend my rant, but your commentary was also completely flawed from beginning to end. When you weren't just adding pointless information that doesn't contribute anything to the commentary, you were calling out minor things that aren't that big a deal, and you were completely missing what I was trying to say. And in addition to that, there are even a few instances where you just stopped the video to agree with me. I thought the commentary community stopped doing that all the way back in 2011. I'll admit, you did bring up a few good points, but those were few and far between. Now, I apologize for not finding the right Ike avatar pictures he used in some of these, but whenever I asked him where he got them, he never responded, so I had to leave the original footage for them. Thanks for tuning in for the commentary, I hope you enjoyed it, and I am Matt of 572nd, and I'll see you all later.